Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly dose of Success God's Way. I am Erin Harrigan, your Hustle with Heart coach and your Healthy Living coach with Arbonne. And hi, Peg. It's so good to see you. I am super excited about tonight's topic. And um, I'm just going to give it one more minute because uh, I know we have a few people that are tuning in and I'm just a little bit early. Um, but we're just going to get started. Um, it's a really good one tonight. So I'm just getting my notes together here. And we'll jump in in just a second. So, hi, Peg. It's good to see you. Uh, let's see. I have all my notes. So I just I want to tell you guys that um, before we get started, <clears throat> I really do write out every week. Uh, but I have to wait until Sunday afternoon because it, it's just like Sunday afternoon is when the Holy Spirit just throws some stuff in my spirit. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. Okay. Um, let me just mark a few pages. Um, while we're waiting. Hi, Christy. It's good to see you. I'm just marking a few pages, uh, in my Bible as we get ready to jump into this. And, um, yeah, lots of really, really good stuff to share with you guys tonight. So, all right, let me get to where I need to be. So much good stuff. So much good stuff. Okay, let me find one more thing. Where am I going? Colossians 2.10. All right, so welcome, everybody. Um, super excited to be here for our topic tonight, which is Stop, Drop, and X toll. So that might sound a little bit familiar to you um, from stop, drop, and roll. This kind of came to me today as we were looking, as uh, the Holy Spirit really put into my heart uh, earlier this week and then this afternoon, this idea of God's glory versus our story. So I'm going to be reading a little bit from my notes tonight and so much to share with you. So let me start um, by opening up in prayer. So, Father God, we are just so grateful for this time together, for our weekly dose of success your way. And, Lord, I am just so grateful to the Holy Spirit for giving me what he wants me to impart tonight to those who are listening, those who will be listening to and watching the replay. And, Lord, I just ask for your message really to flow and that this would resonate in the hearts of those that tune in. And I ask all of that in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, here we go. So, you know, many times as entrepreneurs, we will hit a wall in our business um, and we create a story around that wall. And it's not that the story isn't true. It's really how we move forward in that story and how we use that story. Um, maybe you found yourself overthinking your actions and fearing the outcome. So you're saying, well, but what if they don't pick up the phone or what if they say no to me or what if they leave my business or what if they don't like the products or, or whatever that is? And maybe you're trying to bridge faith and business. So you're still really sorting. Where does my faith, where does God sit in the middle of success? So I'm really excited that you guys tune in tonight. Um, we're going to get to the stop, drop and extol. Um, but I really want to get into the story piece. So first of all, what I want you to know is that whatever story you have is not a bad thing. Your story is what happens to you. Your story is your journey. And most of the time, God is putting you through that, that wilderness or that desert place in testing your faith, in testing your trusting of him. And it's how we use that story that really matters. It's not the story itself, but it's how we use that and how we move forward in that. So sometimes we can be using, we may be in a season of sowing, or we're not seeing a lot of reaping yet, but we may be using that sowing to write an ending of a limited harvest. So we may be sowing the seeds, but as we're going along, we're thinking, well, the last time I sowed these seeds, nothing grew. Or things grew, but then they died off. And in your business, that might look like, I sowed all these seeds and I got great clients, 
but then they never bought from me again or they never did business with me again. Or if you're network marketing, I built a team and then they left. And, and so you may be telling this story. You may be reliving in fear these past disappointments and wondering how can it possibly be different when the common denominator in this is me. So I'm the common denominator in my past and I'm the common denominator in my present. So how can it possibly be different? I'm still here. I'm still the me that's in this. But I want you to think about, are we dishonoring God and what he's delivered us from in our life by questioning this and by not trusting? And here's what I mean. You know, earlier this week I was out to lunch with friends and then I was sharing a little bit of um, kind of my Arbonne story. And they know me. They know my business. And one of them really, really called me out. And she said, you know, you keep saying X, but I believe God has delivered you from that. And, but you, you keep reliving what he's already delivered you from. And I got to thinking that by, by continuing to question whether or not I've been delivered from that situation, by continuing to question where's the next business going to come from, et cetera, am I dishonoring God? and not fully proclaiming his glory and what he's already done? And am I discounting his power as if to say, well, Lord, you did really great, but I don't really believe that you're going to do that again. Or I don't really believe that you can do bigger than that. So you see how I take my story and I start to use it in a different way. And if we're wondering how can this be done, or we're thinking it's all on our shoulders, um, we're wrestling with these questions that God can answer, but are we asking him to answer them? So as I mentioned earlier, and I've mentioned before, what I share with you in here and in our daily dose is, is things that I go through. So I have not arrived. I am going through these as well, but most often we learn by teaching. And so that's why I'm excited to share with this with you tonight, because as my mission to be God's vessel, what he's called me to be, to share his insight versus my eyesight. Remember that I'm always here to allow my hindsight to be your foresight. And so my hope is that this really begins or has already begun to resonate with you. And if it has, please go ahead and comment below. Um, you know, give us, give some likes or, or whatever. And if you're watching the replay, same thing. So here's the thing is, um, we're often wondering in our business, when is this going to take off? What's it going to look like? Um, we look backward and we think, if that happens again, people leaving, loss of income, title, rank, etc. Like, I, I don't know if I can take it if that happens again. And we let this journey become our story, which then we misuse. And you guys, this is so normal. Please know that even the people that are at the top ranks of the companies that maybe you're in, this is normal. This is normal. Um, I've heard it said, the higher the level, the stronger the devil. In other words, just because you reach a higher level in your business doesn't mean that you're going to have these challenges. And in fact, many times you'll have bigger challenges around this. And we spin this tale over and over again instead of learning and moving forward. So if you watch any sports story, um, so my husband's a huge golf fan, and so we watch Golf Channel a lot. Um, we watch E360. I don't know if you've ever seen those stories um, on ESPN. But if you've watched any sport, you will see stories of the great comeback. So people who have a great comeback. And very often, when they speak of that comeback, they talk about that setback and how it messed with their mind and how their mind was going in all different directions, and they had to really shift to get back to a place where they could move forward to be successful. So maybe they lost a few tournaments, um, or they were at the top of their game, and then they fell backwards. That mind mess that happens can take time to get beyond. And so if you've ever seen any of these sports stories, I mean, look at Michael Phelps, for example, right? Michael Phelps is this massive Olympian, huge champion, more gold medals than any other swimmer ever, and yet he battled depression, and he had to overcome that to come back to finish successfully the way that he wanted to. 
So we have to rewrite and create new chapters. And that's what I want to give you today so that you can move forward with confidence in the strength of God, not yourself, but in the Lord. And that what he has given you as a vehicle in your business is the vehicle he's given you to build his kingdom and who we want to be as we're building this kingdom. So this is where I'm getting into the stop, drop, and, and um, stop, drop, and extol instead of stop, drop, and roll. So the first thing is stop, stop. Awareness is the number one thing that you can have. Becoming aware of my story this week um, that I was not fully accepting what God had delivered me from and where he had taken me and who he had started to create me to be. Um, that, that was, that I was still questioning these things. And I'll give you an example. At the beginning of each month, I get paid both in my consulting business and my Arbonne business. And the day after that happens, after everything's hit my bank account and I start going through my budget and I'm checking stuff off and I'm paying bills and I'm feeling good. The next day, you guys, I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen this month? What if I don't make that much this month? That is not trusting the Lord. That is not looking back at the provision that he has provided me since the day I accepted Christ. The way he made us meet our bills last year when both of my businesses were in a huge challenge. I am I am discounting his power when I do that. So telling myself, but what if this doesn't happen? Or what if this doesn't happen? Or will I actually do it? So the first thing that you have to do when you're in this is you have to stop. You have to stop asking that question, is he going to do it again? You have to stop spinning your story in a different in that same direction. You have to stop living in that story. And that's easy, right? But here's how. So I'm going to give you five things that you can do to stop in the midst of that, all right? Number one is you need to remind. You need to remind yourself of who you are in the Lord's word. And I'm going to read a couple of things to you that tell you who you are. So in Colossians 2.10, this says, you are complete in him. You are complete, okay? In Ephesians 2.10, let me get back to that. God is so faithful. Every time I turn the page, it takes me right there. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He has already predestined, predestined this. So you need to remind yourself of who you are. You need to remind yourself of who God is. And I have a couple of verses around that. So first... In Hebrews 11, 6, he says, <clears throat> Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Remind yourself that he is the rewarder of those of us who seek him. In Deuteronomy 7, 17, he says, <clears throat> Oh, let me get to it. Here we go. These nations are greater. If you should say in your heart, these nations are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid, but you shall remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. So remind yourself of what he's already done. Okay. Um, there's one more thing that I want to read you. And this is, again, remembering who God is and what he has done. And this is in Deuteronomy um, chapter two, and I'm not, or chapter eight, I'm not going to read all of it to you, but I'm going to read um, a few pieces of this. In verse two, you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years into the wilderness. Be, uh, verse 11, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command to you today. Lest when you, this is 12, when you have eaten are full and, and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. And when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied, when your heart is lifted up, do not, and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. So don't forget that. He, this is 16. He fed you in the wilderness with manna. All right. Um, Remember the Lord your God. This is 18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Guys, 
we have to remember, okay? Um, number two, we have to be aware of him and his promises. So I just want to um, read you this piece, and I'm going to post this. I'm not going to read all of it, but this is Deuteronomy 20, um, chapter 20, verse 1. Realize that you work for the Lord himself, okay? Um, honor and glorify him in everything we do. And realize that our pay comes both now and in the hereafter. Remember that in, um, I, I think it's in, I don't think I wrote this down, but in 2 Corinthians, I think it is, and I'll find it, that the words that go from his mouth shall not return void. That might be in Isaiah. I'll find it. So remember his promises, okay? Number three, seek him, worship him listen to him and obey him. Number four, stop thinking that you need to be someone else in your business other than you. Sometimes we look around in this business and we think, well, to be at that level, I have to be like that person. And I'm not comfortable being like that person because maybe they, maybe they do great things in their business, but we don't have the same, you know, values. Our goals aren't the same. Be you guys, be you. And number five, stop letting the world define success for you. Yes, there are measurement milestones in our businesses. How many clients we have, what level we get to, um, what is our volume for the month, what is our sponsoring, whatever that looks like. Yes, those are milestones. But define success God's way. Understand what motivates you and what constitutes success for you. So those five things are how you can stop living in that story. All right. The next thing is drop. Drop the attachment to the outcome, guys. It is not about the outcome. It is not about the outcome. You know, I had a conversation on Friday with two of my amazing friends and mentors in Arbonne. They're just incredible women of faith. Um, they know who they are. And as we were having a conversation, I was, um, really getting just super black and white about, well, but God had called me here and therefore I'm not supposed to be there. And um, one of them said to me, you know, when we surrender our businesses to the Lord, we do not surrender the potential to build his kingdom or the vehicle for building his kingdom. We don't surrender that. So we still do the work, but we surrender what it should be like. We surrender what we think it should be. We surrender the title and the timing, et cetera. All right? So don't be black and right, white. Drop your attachment to those outcomes, all right? The second way that you can drop that atta attachment, again, is defining what success milestones are for you. So here's what I want you to know. Success is not getting to the level. That's a milestone. Do you know what success is, guys? Success is acting and being in our business every single day and taking action. It's doing however many asks a day. It's connecting with people. It's the day in, day out activity that we do with intention, all right? But we have to define those milestones for ourselves so that we can drop that attachment to the outcome. The second drop that I want you to do is I want you to drop the mic right? Drop the mic. What do I mean by that? When you're spending time with the Lord, drop the mic so you're not the one speaking the whole time. Get quiet. Meditate on his word. Listen. Ask him the questions and then shut up. <laughs> Long time ago in sales, one of the things that I was taught in a sales training class was ask the question and shut up. Don't qualify it. Don't go on and on and on. Just ask the question. And we do that with the Lord, right? We're, we're saying, you know, Lord, I just want you to show me who I should talk to. But also, blah, 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 blah. No, drop the mic, guys. Let him speak and listen, all right? And then the last thing is, how are you going to know it's him speaking? You've got to focus and fill first. And this is one of my hashtags that I use all the time when I post in the morning on Instagram. Focus and fill first. I got that from Catherine Lutz, my mentor who brought me to Christ in Arbonne. You've got to sit down and have that time with the Lord every single day. And I really encourage you to do that first thing in the morning. Otherwise, when you drop the mic, you're not going to know that it's him speaking to you. You're not going to be able to discern his voice because you're not spending enough time with him in the word. All right. So the last thing we've been through stop. We've been through drop, and now we're going to extol, okay? Um, 
The definition of extol, by the way, is to praise enthusiastically. So how are you going to extol? Well, you are going to praise and acknowledge God for what he has delivered you through, for the work that he has done in you, for the gift of the business he has given you to live out and build his kingdom. You're going to praise and acknowledge him for the purpose he has given you, as we talked about in Ephesians 2.10, and for the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit has brought to you. I want to go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. I'm not going to read all of this to you, but if you're following along, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. And what this says is, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. I'm going to, I'm going to skip a little bit. <clears throat> There are diversities in gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences in ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So you're going to praise and acknowledge what are those gifts that he's given you, and how can you put them into practice? If you've not done a spiritual gifts uh, inventory, uh, I can I can point you in the direction of one, or I would encourage you to go Google it and find out what your spiritual gifts are, and then think about how can I put those spiritual gifts into action in my business. How else are you going to extol him? You're going to extol him by focusing on serving versus striving. Serving versus striving. You're going to participate in daily gratitude. So again, writing that in your gratitude journal and speaking that out loud. You're going to extol him for bringing to mind the people that you need to speak with, the things that you need to surrender, and where you need to grow. Thank him for point. I was thanking him for pointing this out to me this week. Like, thank you, Lord, that I've been living in my story and not honoring you. And oh, by the way, discounting the work that you've done. You're going to extol him by praising him for interrupting your journey to redirect you and your focus. You're going to praise him for the no's. You're going to praise him for the people that leave your business or the people that say they're going to do the business and then don't. Why? Because that is saving you time and energy. And if you haven't already heard this, rejection is God's protection. And you're going to extol him by being bold. Please promise me that the day you get up on stage for whatever that recognition is, that you are going to extol him boldly by standing in front of everyone and saying, I didn't do this. I was just going where God was going. I saw where he was working and I followed him. All right. Be bold in doing that. Okay. So I just want to close this out with one more verse for Deuteronomy. And again, I'm going to um, post all of these. And um, this is something that he was saying to, this is in Deuteronomy chapter one, verse 16. I'm not claiming that this is what he said to us. I'm just claiming, I'm, I'm saying, this is what um, this is what Moses was speaking to uh, the Israelites on the edge of the Jordan, or, or remember, recalling for the new generation what, what the God had done in the past. Um, but you might be feeling like this, all right? So here's what he says in uh, chapter 1, verse 16. Oh, am I in the right place? Wait a minute, maybe I'm not in the right place. Shoot, I'm going to find it. But basically, the gist of it is, you have dwelt here long enough. You have dwelt here long enough. This is what the Lord said to the Israelites. You have dwelt in this space long enough. It is time to move on. You guys, you have dwelt in your story long enough. It is time to move forward. It is time to stop, drop, and extol. So I hope you found that helpful tonight. Um, I'm going to be practicing that this week for sure, for sure. Um, please get down below and comment. Let me know what really stood out for you. What, what did you really feel tugging in your heart as I was talking through this? Um, what are some of those things that kind of really had you go, whoo, oh, man, that's hitting home? Um, because this was hitting home hard for me this week, and I wanted to make sure I shared that with you. Uh, please feel free to invite your friends to, this, to the Success God's Way community. Um, my podcast is going to be launching this week. Super excited about that. So I'll be filling you in on that. And then again, if walking this journey of Success God's Way, um, you're enjoying these pieces, but you feel like you'd like to dig a little deeper personally, and you could use a coach around that, around that let's have a conversation and see if Hustle with Heart 
is the right place for you. So thank you so much for tuning in. It is such an honor and a privilege to be God's vessel to share this message. And I hope you guys have a great week ahead. I'll see you tomorrow on the Daily Dose on my page, my regular personal page. All right, see ya.